Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Espoir David and today I'm going to be playing a game called You and Him. A game where we meet a hitchhiker and it probably won't go very well. <laughs> Now let me start off by saying that this is a game that is meant for 18 plus audiences. It is in demo form now, in fact I believe this is the prologue, but the full game will be meant for adults. Gone without a trace, Emma Jane Lee. Emma Jane Lee, age 23, went missing last Friday night on June 16th. After she went out clubbing with a group of friends, her friends last spotted her walking down North Street, heading in the direction of her apartment. Her family filed a missing persons report after they couldn't get in contact with her when her boss became concerned and notified the family that she hadn't shown up for work. Leave it to your boss be the first person that you're missing. Middle of nowhere. 3.32 p.m. Oh, that's lovely. Where are we? Nowhere. In other news, the hit boy band Cake will be playing live tomorrow night at the Sanita Alley Stadium in Park Bend, Arizona. Wow, Cake is gonna be here! Yeah. Cake! According to our sources, concert tickets sold out within seconds of their initial online release date, despite the fact that the massive influx of these users caused the website itself to crash. Oh jeez. That must have been some cake. Luckily, they managed to get the site up and running again. But many people were upset since they were forced to log back in, and many missed out on buying tickets because of this. Aww. Thousands took to Twitter to vent their frustrations, while others made light of the situation by making and sharing memes. Many of these posts went viral and got Sunita Alley Stadium trending for three days straight on Twitter itself. Twitter. I like that. <laughs> That's funny. I can't believe what I'm seeing in these reports. Can you, Kenny? The car's radio crackles, and a new voice joins in on the conversation, his tone coming across as both jovial and borderline cartoonish. Not in the slightest, and I'm just stunned as you are. It's fascinating to see these young men who started from modest backgrounds rise to take the world by storm. I don't think I've seen a boy band craze this bad since the 90s and early 2010s. Yeah. But I don't think those even compare to what we're seeing today, don't you agree, Bob? Yeah, Bob, what do you think? Bob, the first radio DJ who spoke, lets out a giant guffaw. Ooh boy, that is an understatement. Even my husband adores their latest hit single, The Way You Make Me Sway, which is saying something. I thought your husband hated modern day music. My point exactly, if they can make my husband love their sound, then you know they've got something special that old men like him and I can't even ignore. Heh. <laughs> When they start playing Cake's latest single, you turn down the dial on the radio, choosing instead to focus on the long stretch of road before you. The blistering heat already makes it hard to concentrate, and you don't need the added distraction. Especially considering you've driven almost 323 miles thanks to your aunt's pleas to gather up all your uncle's valuables and drop them off at his new apartment in the next six towns over and are now on the return drive home. Sans guns. You tried turning her down, but your mom called and forced you to agree. Something about being a good niece and mentions of past actions where your aunt almost didn't treat you like dirt and yada yada yada. <laughs> At that point, you just wanted to hang up and go back to your hermit crab lifestyle. So you agreed and took on an obscene amount of guns for your aunt to give to your uncle. Due to the terms and conditions of their divorce, the Dutch ruled that since your aunt got ownership of the house, your aunt needed to fork over her collection of guns and hand them over to your uncle. Getting the aforementioned guns out of her house was a nightmare. The woman kept screaming every time you loaded the guns into your car. Ooh. You had to restrain her when she kept trying to lunge for your trunk, saying he wouldn't know if one or two were missing. <laughs> When you refused to budge on the matter, she became inconsolable and ran inside the house, shutting herself in the bathroom for a solid 20 minutes before you needed to leave. Sounds like we have a lot more issues here than a cute hitchhiker on the street! When she returned, her demeanor returned to normal. Well, at least for her. Relatives are weird, man. Speaking of weird, how long was this stretch of road again? You could have sworn it was a heck of a lot shorter the first go-around. Ugh, not to mention you needed to pee. You regret not stopping by the gas station 50 miles back. 
actively choosing to ignore the huge warning signs that said, Next gas station in 100 miles. A terrible decision, considering the current state of your bladder. Ooh. You mull over your lack of options when something in the distance catches your attention. As your car eats up the distance between you, you make the shape of a large, lumbering figure walking along the side of the road, with her thumb jetted out and raised above their head. Huh. What's a hitchhiker doing all the way out here? Your bladder quakes. Never mind, you don't have time for this. Not to mention the fact that your mother always warned you about shady hitchhikers. Letting this man into your car reeks of future trouble. Best to avoid a situation like this altogether. Good thinking on ya. Good thinking. When you pull right up behind him, you notice a distinct limp into his walk and blood blooming out from his pant leg. Uh oh. Seeing his injury causes guilt to settle in. Aw, were they establishing that this character that we're playing as is already easily guilted into stuff? He's clearly hurt and needs help, and there's no one else around but you. Uh, I think I should save? You wrestle with your options when he suddenly collapses into a heap on the side of the road. Oh no! Crap! There goes your self-preservation. You park just a ways ahead of him and launch out of the driver's seat, praying to a god you don't believe in that he's okay. When you reach him, you fall to your knees and gently nudge his shoulder, only to garner no response. Oh no! Come on, please be okay. I can't witness a dead body today. You lean down and press your head against his chest. You feel it rise and fall and the sound of a faint heartbeat. Good, he's still breathing. You sit back up and try gently shaking his shoulder again. Sir? Sir? Can you hear me? <sighs> he's also conscious. Another good sign. Don't worry, sir. I'm going to call for help, okay? Who are you gonna call for help? You're in the middle of nowhere. Where are you gonna where are you gonna call the ambulance? Like I'm by some trees. You pull out your cell phone, ready to dial the emergency helpline, when a hand latches onto your wrist in a vice like grip, and the man beneath you adjusts himself into a sitting position. <laughs> You're taken aback by the man's fierce gaze staring at you through a veil of raven colored hair. Don't call anyone. I'm fine. Yes, but... Nails dug into your forearm. Not enough to draw blood, but enough to warn you he means business. Sir, I can get right back in my car, sir. I can... Sir... I said I'm fine. Call? Don't call. Um... Fine, I won't call then. Suit yourself. You lower your phone, exiting out of the phone app without a second glance to the screen. All right, but at least let me take a look at your leg. He visibly relaxes at your compliant nature and nods, leaning back so you can roll up his pant leg and examine the damage lying underneath. Blood coats the wound on his leg. You can't even see the extent of the injury when there's so much. You need to clean it off. Wait right here. You head for your car and locate the box cutter knife hidden underneath the driver's seat. Cutting off the bottom half of your shirt, you grab the once cold but now warm water bottle you brought with you for your mini road trip and use it to soak the stray piece of fabric. You toss your box cutter back into the driver's seat before returning to the hitchhiker. The hitchhiker looks up upon hearing your approaching footsteps. You watch as his eyes widen into the equivalent of large saucers, his lips slightly parted in surprise as his gaze zeroes in on the new patch of exposed skin. Aww. He studies the shape of your body, tracing over each and every part of you with new eyes. Sir? You grow flustered at the attention, but you also don't hate it. In a nice way. You're a little disappointed when he averts his gaze, wondering if you misinterpreted the situation, until he bites at his bottom lip as if he's done something naughty. Aww. Your heart flutters at the implications. His reactions are kind of cute. You lower yourself to his level and try to ignore the blush spreading across your own cheeks. He's really attractive, a fact that you couldn't help but notice when you rushed to his side and saw that intense expression like an arrow striking through your helpless little heart. <laughs> Aw, that face, aw. 
But that's not the only thing that garnered your attention. This hitchhiker is Adam, the lead singer of Cake. Yeah. Oh, he is? Oh, jeez. What's he doing all the way out here in the middle of nowhere? So I couldn't help but notice this, but you're Adam, right? The hitchhiker hesitates before nodding. Okay, so I don't mean to sound rude, but what are you doing all the way out here, asking strangers for rides? Adam rubs the back of his head, almost sheepish in his answer. I accidentally drove my car into a ditch a few miles back, and I forgot my phone at the studio, so I couldn't really reach out and call anyone. Figured on the off chance that somebody drove by, I could bum a ride. He smiles then. <laughs> Guess I got lucky you showed up when you did. You're a lifesaver. No. Oh, you're almost blinded by that smile. No wonder his fangirls go crazy. Urging your pounding heart to calm down, you try concentrating on the conversation at hand and get started on cleaning his leg. You need to focus. Oh, was that crash how you got hurt? Adam shakes his head. Cut my thigh open while hiking with my friends a couple of weeks ago. One of the tree branches was a little too sharp and gave me this as a souvenir. The doctor stitched me up, but I guess it tore back open since I started walking. Ooh, 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 jeez, ow. He chuckles to himself. This is no laughing matter, sir. Ugh. I didn't even notice if you can believe it. You're surprised to hear this, considering he's got a performance going on later tomorrow night. Surely he should let it heal before going back on stage. Well, hopefully when I drive you back to town we can get you a doctor to get it taken care of. I'm sorry I can't do anything else in the meantime. Don't worry. You've been a big help. You flush at his praise. The smoothness of his voice and the way he says that makes you feel things you haven't felt in a long time. In places you haven't felt in a long time. You attempt to focus on the task at hand, wiping away the thick, congealed blood, but it's hard to concentrate when all you can think about is the fact that your hands are near his thighs. And, oh gosh, you're turning beet red from the thought alone. Nibbling at your bottom lip, you peer up at him and find his gaze locked under your hands with blistering intensity. You can't tell if he wants to rip your hands off his leg or to guide them towards other intimate places. Dude, we just met, like... I got stuff to do. I'm tired. I gotta pee. I've been driving for like five hours. I am not interested in smooching. I'm just making sure you don't die. The heat warming your body desires the latter. Something wrong? His gaze suddenly flicks upward and you jump, flustered that he's caught you staring. N nothing. Just a little daze is all. Probably because of the heat. You duck your head and redirect your attention downward, ignoring the horny little devil inside of you. <laughs> ignoring the espoir du vide inside of you, saying, Kiss him! Smudge him! Get the smudges! Since you're back on track, you didn't notice this before, but the blood on his leg is a bit... weird. What? It chips and peels away like dried paint instead of smearing. What the... What? Eep! Oh no! The man withdraws a small silver knife tucked into the waistband of his jeans and lunges at you. You don't even have a spare moment to react before he drives the weapon into your chest. Uh, uh, rude? Sir? Wait. Was that fake blood? Was that fake blood? Sir, I ripped my shirt. This shirt is Gucci. It's not actually Gucci. I don't know what a Gucci shirt is, but... Uh, uh, sir, how dare, how dare you, sir, how dare you? Confusion and terror battle in your mind. Adrenaline pumps through your veins as you try to fight him off. You scratch at his chest, face, anywhere you can dig your nails into, but he scoffs and pins your arms down with his knees. You watch in horror as he plunges the knife into your exposed chest again and again. Ow! Rude! Uh, you're getting my shirt! You get, you're getting blood all over my Gucci shirt. I do not know what a Gucci shirt looks like. You don't even have time to ask why as the world goes dark. How rude. Oh, well, this does say that it's a pro, uh, pre, 
pre prequel? Prologue? Prologue, so I guess whoever we're playing as now might not be who we're playing as later. Alright, fine, then I will call. Forget you. You retch your arm out of his grasp and dial for hope anyway. He's insane if he thinks you're just gonna let this whole thing slide. He's clearly injured and definitely needs a dressing for that wound on his leg. And I don't feel like tearing my Gucci shirt to do that! You yank your arm out of his grasp and press the phone to your ear before standing up, turning your back to the man as you glare at the sun beating down on you. Could it be any hotter? An operator picks up. I'm gonna get a knife in my back. Place your bets. I'm gonna get a knife in the back. Hello, what's your emergent- She's cut off mid-sentence when the hitchhiker plucks the phone out of your hands and drops it into the ground. He crushes the device underneath a scuffed boot, hands in pockets, looking almost bored as he does so. You're just gonna- You're just gonna break my phone like that, fam? You're just gonna break my phone like that? You're just gonna- that phone was Gucci! Once he's done destroying the phone you've worked three years in customer service to pay off, he runs a hand through his hair and reveals an all-too-familiar smile. Okay, if you weren't dying then, you're gonna die now. I'm sorry, I'm gotta take off my earrings, gotta put the Vaseline on my neck, roll up my sleeves. You're gonna catch these hands! That made me actually a little bit mad. You're gonna get smooched with my fist! Sir! You recognize those features that spanned across multiple blogs on the internet stratosphere. From his gleaming white teeth, which were perfect advertisement for one of the ten toothpaste commercials he sponsored, to the scar on his eyebrow that fangirls obsessed over. The lead singer of Cake, Adam. <laughs> you open your mouth to comment, wondering how a man like him ended up here, when he rushes forward and plunges something into your shoulder. Yeah, well, whatever you throw at me better be a sandwich, because you're gonna eat it. He just stabs me. I, I don't feel anything. Like, I'm still mad that you broke my phone. Do you know how many sandwiches I had to make and customer service stuff I had to do to get that phone? And you just, you better buy me a new phone. And a hospital for this thing right here. But this shoulder was Gucci. <laughs> you're caught off guard. His momentum pushing you backwards, and your head cracks painfully against the asphalt. Ow! Rude! The man stands over you for a moment as he wipes the blood off his knife by using his shirt as a makeshift handkerchief. He smiles cruelly as he crawls over your collapsed body with a predatory gleam in his eye. Thighs boxing in your hips, trapping you underneath him as his hand pins your wrists over your head. Hot, but also how dare you! You watch as he reaches into his back pocket to reveal a phone of his own. He taps something on his screen, and all of a sudden you're blinded by a light. Did you just take a picture of me? Let me see it. Let me see it. Let me make sure it came out good. You try blinking the stars out of your eyes, confused by what just occurred. Shoot. I left the flash on. Sorry about that. This son of a biscuit! I know, right? Finally, me and the MC agree on something. This son of a biscuit! This son of a buttermilk biscuit! How dare you! Dare you take a picture of me without my permission! Who, who are you? Who do you think you are, sir? You kick your legs and buck your hips in a valiant effort to toss him off your body, throwing your weight around in hope that you'll catch him off balance, but he doesn't seem phased in the slightest. You give up after exhausting yourself. Darn it all! Once you've settled, Adam taps his phone screen again, and this time there's no blinding light. He stares at the picture he just took for a moment, nods to himself, then shoves his phone into his back pocket, satisfied by whatever he sees. You've got a pretty photogenic face. The pictures will print out great, don't you think? You try spitting in his face, but it misses by a messy landslide. Aw, that wasn't very nice. Nice went out the window when you stabbed me! You big jerk! You big handsome cute jerk with your stupid nice hair and your stupid smile and your stupid really cool fishnet sleeve things. And your... Wait, what? Oh right, you stabbed me. <laughs> you stabbed me. Maybe I wouldn't have stabbed you if you listened to me and hung up the phone. 
um, actually, that didn't work either. You still stabbed me. You butt. You big butt. You still stabbed me. <laughs> you get the distinct feeling that he's lying through his teeth. His perfectly pearlescent teeth. You don't peg him as the honest type, considering he's probably got a bunch of skeletons in his closet if he's attacking strangers for poops and giggles. What did you want my photo for? Scrapbooking? His face darkens at your retort. How is that any of your business? Because this face is Gucci! <laughs> Surely, he's joking. You look at his tense expression. Nope, he is 100% serious. But at least he's not cutting you open like a slab of meat. If you can keep him talking, maybe you'll find a way out of this mess.